People will laugh in my face when I tell them that my commitment to exercise and my commitment to high intensity interval training has literally made me smarter. And that's not some narcissistic, like conceited statement. I'm not trying to be like that. The reality is I've always felt that my commitment to pushing myself into these unpleasant situations of high intensity interval training and extreme activity, extreme intense workouts really does make me feel smarter. And maybe it was just a placebo effect or maybe it was just all perception and perception is reality. But the fact is now that we start looking at the science, we realize there is some physiological merit to that. So let's talk about how high intensity interval training literally, literally will make you smarter. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then you'll see that little bell icon. Why don't you go ahead and click on that bell icon and turn on notifications. That way you will always get notified whenever I post a new video or go live. It's super important that you do so. All right, let's talk about this for a second. So our brain is like 2% of our overall body weight, right? Yet somehow it still uses 50% of our glucose. Okay, it uses a lot of our blood sugar and it uses about 20% of our overall oxygen. This is extreme. Now the thing is, is in order to deliver all this glucose and deliver all this oxygen, we need a good amount of blood flow. So we need good blood delivery to the brain. However, it's a constant checks and balances if we have too much blood flow to the brain, obviously that's a very bad thing. That can cause all kinds of issues. And we have too little blood flow to the brain, then we have poor cognitive function. We don't feel good. We feel brain foggy. That's the issue that a lot of us face. Well, let's go ahead and let's talk about one thing that's very basic first. Exercise improves blood flow. Okay, this isn't the meat of this video. Trust me, I'm gonna go a lot more in depth than this, but we can't deny the fact that when we exercise, we improve the strength of the left ventricle of our heart and it allows us to pump more blood with relative ease. That means the heart has to work less hard to deliver blood, which is gonna deliver the glucose and deliver the oxygen to our brain, but also deliver the neurotrophins, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit more later in this video. So the interesting thing is aerobic activity, cardio, has been shown to increase the number of actual blood vessels. Like we can actually create new blood vessels that way. And then resistance training and weight training increases the size and sort of the strength of those blood vessels. So it is a little bit of a team effort, but we have to look a little bit more than that. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a study that starts breaking down exercise and its relationship with what are called neurotrophins. You see, neurotrophins are things that grow new neurons. They grow new nerve cells. They grow new brain cells, literally. What's really interesting is when you start looking at how the brain adapts to stress, you realize that the stress from exercise could literally be making us smarter. Here's how it works. When we exercise, our muscles produce something known as FNDC5, okay? This FNDC5 does a number of things within the body, but one of the byproducts of FNDC5 being upregulated is it ramps up production of what is called irisin. When this irisin is upregulated, we have a vast production of brain-derived neurotropic factor. Now, I'm beating a little bit of a dead horse when I talk about BDNF. If you watch my videos, you know that BDNF is good, but for all intents and purposes, what BDNF is, is basically something that grows new brain cells. BDNF grows new neurons, it grows new brain cells, and it literally makes us smarter. So there's other ways that you can boost your BDNF too. Like one of the things that I like to do is boost my BDNF through other mechanisms. So utilizing things like lion's mane coffee or any kind of chaga mushroom or anything like that that's been shown to boost that activity within the brain already. So doing a little bit of that along with my workout, since it doesn't break a fast and I can still do it in a fasted state, ends up working out pretty darn well. So for example, I'll use Four Sigmatic's lion's mane coffee. That way I get coffee in a fasted state, but I'm getting the lion's mane effect that's actually going to help boost BDNF. So I'll explain later in this video, but BDNF plays a huge role when it comes down to our brain being able to just function at a higher rate. And lion's mane also improves what's called nerve growth factor. So not only do we get an increase in BDNF, but we get an increase in nerve growth factor, which grows new neurons and grows new brain cells. So literally can make us smarter all while increasing brain activity at the same time. To put matters into perspective, there was a study that was published in the journal PNAS. It took a look at 120 adults that underwent specific exercise testing. Now they found that when subjects exercised, they had a pretty dramatic increase in the size of their hippocampus. Now the hippocampus portion of the brain is what really gives you that overall cognitive function when you think about it as a whole, right? So it's like spatial memory, spatial awareness, everything that makes you kind of sharp in the moment when you're actually like articulating or talking. So when we have more spatial awareness or spatial memory and more size to the hippocampus, 
we're effectively a bit smarter. And exercise is linked to a pretty big increase in the hippocampus. But let's take it deeper than that. What about when we start looking at intensity? Okay, we know that just basic cardio, basic exercise improves BDNF levels and can increase the size of our brain. But what about intensity? How does that play in? With that, we have to look at another study. This study was published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. Okay, it took a look at a group of individuals broken down into two specific training days. Okay, one day they had them go on a bike where they would push it to 10% more than their ventilatory threshold, meaning they were pushing at a high intensity. The other day they pushed it to negative 20% of their ventilatory threshold. So basically 20% less than their ventilatory threshold. Well, what they found was pretty interesting. They found that the subjects, when they were pushing it all the way, like in a high intensity interval training fashion, at 10% more than their ventilatory threshold, ended up having a 13 and 30% respective increase in BDNF levels. Whereas the group that trained below their ventilatory threshold, like in a standard cardio form, had no change in their BDNF. So when we were actually training at a high intensity, we saw big improvements in BDNF. Whereas low intensity, no real change. Okay, that right then and there shows that it's high intensity that we need to be focusing on. But what really gets wild with this study is it actually was found that there was no direct correlation between levels of BDNF and VO2 max, but there was a correlation between lactate. So let me put it like this. It basically means that the respiratory rate or the VO2 max or how hard they were breathing didn't really matter. It was more about the lactate response, which shows a full body stress. For example, if I told you to sprint at 100% for like 10 seconds until you just flat out couldn't go anymore, but 10 seconds, you would likely fatigue simply as systemic overload and lactic acid overload than you would uh, at a VO2 max overload. Compare that to like running 400 meters where you'd be huffing and puffing and you'd probably tire out simply because you're breathing a lot. Okay, it's that 10 second sprint, that lactate response that triggered the BDNF growth, not the breathing. The body is all about seeing this heavy duty stress and growing and adapting to that heavy duty stress. I mean, really is about making sure you position yourself with unpleasant situations so that your brain gets tougher. The fact is mild stress leads to neurogenesis. It leads to the growth of new neurons, okay? Chronic stress does the opposite. So if we can have acute bouts of stress that, are, that we're in control of, we have a powerful effect on neurogenesis, on growing our brain. You see, when the hedonic state of an exercise supersedes the actual stress data, that's when the results happen. That's what's wild. And some of that is perception. So the hedonic state meaning like when the unpleasant or close to unpleasant reality of exercise is bigger than the actual stress response in the body itself, that's when we actually create more BDNF. So meaning if you're in a little bit of pain, if you're stressing yourself out a little bit because the workout's so hard, you're gonna have more BDNF, but more importantly, you're going to have more permeability of the blood-brain barrier, which means the BDNF can actually get in. So literally, it sounds like I'm crazy when I explain this, but exposing yourself to unpleasant physical activity by pushing yourself super hard basically disarms the brain while simultaneously increasing BDNF so the BDNF can actually get inside the brain and trigger growth. And this is a scientific fact. This isn't just Thomas just pulling stuff out of his side of his mouth, right? This is like real stuff. So at the end of the day, if you want to get smarter, HIT is the, probably the most legit way. Forget nootropics, forget all this stuff. They have their place. Behind dizzy interval training and exposing yourself to stress is where it's at. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.